Shalom and welcome to Bible Stories as Blueprints of the Soul, your Biblical Hebrew Podcast. Shalom and good morning. Today I would like to speak to you about Jacob as a quality, about Jacob within. But before, I would like to start with his mother, Rebecca. Rebecca within ourselves. But before that, I would like to share Philon's perspective about the names Leah, Sarah and Rebecca. Philon says that Sarah, Leah and Rebecca are not just matriarchs, as people tend to think. They're also qualities inside of ourselves and they hold the virtue. In our previous conversations, we were discussing Leah as a virtue, also Sarah as a virtue. But now, maybe it's the time to speak about Rebecca as a virtue. The name Rebecca is written with four letters, Resh, Bet, Kof, and He. The value of the name Rebecca in Hebrew, Rivka, is 307. 307. When we take the zero out, we remain with 37. 37 is the value of Hevel in Hebrew. Abel, the first shepherd. Hevel. So, Rebecca, in her code, carries the structure of a shepherd. But a shepherd has two aspects within the vertical and the horizontal. The word shepherd in Hebrew is Oe, Oe, Resh, Ein, He. The value of Oe, Shepherd, is 275. Now, Herd in Hebrew is Eder, Eder, Ein, Daled, Resh, Eder. The difference between Eder, Herd in Hebrew, and Shepherd, Roe is one. So the word shepherd, Roe, includes also the herd. Because the letter He in Roe, Resh, Ein, He, already includes the letter Dalid. The five includes the four. So, Oe, shepherd in Hebrew, already holds the herd. Oe already holds or includes the herd within. Like in English, we say shepherd. Shepherd includes the herd already in the structure of the word. Why to start with such a forward? Because the shepherd within ourselves holds two axes. One is vertical, the shepherd, and one is horizontal, the herd, the many. So Rebecca, as a shepherd, holds two axes within. This is why when she is pregnant, her pregnancy is unusual. She she experiences unusual pain. And the Bible says, Why do I suffer that hard? Why? And she goes to the academy or to the school of Shem and Ever, Shem and Ever, to discuss her pain, to inquire her pain. And 
the answer that they give her is simple. You are carrying two kinds of people or two kinds of nations inside of yourself, two excesses. Each one is opposite the other. The vertical has the axis of the soul, like a candle. The burning of a candle is vertical. And another axis is the horizontal, is the multiplicity. And you are carrying a great conflict. So Rebecca holds both the perspective of the shepherd, because the shepherd is the soul, and the herd is the body, the horizontal aspect. And Rebecca's pregnancy continues until the point of birth. In her birth, twins are coming to the world. The first that goes out of the womb is the horizontal one, is Esau. And the second that comes outside of the womb holding his brother Hill is Jacob. He is coming the second in space and time, but he is the first to be conceived in spirit because the soul, the human soul, is proceeding, proceeding or is generating the human body. Without human spirit, we shall not have a human body. So finally, at the moment of birth, two excesses or two aspects of our life getting out of her womb. Esau, the horizontal, the multiplicity, and Jacob, the vertical, the shepherd. When Esau is 40, he's 40 years old, he is marrying several women and has more than several children. Rebecca sees this picture and she doesn't want to live anymore. She said, Katsti Bechayai. I have enough of this. I don't want to live anymore if this is the picture that I'm going to see. Just multiplicity of people with no soul, with no conversation. And she asks Jacob to move on in his life. Jacob also, while fleeing from his brother Esau, spends 14 years in the Academy of Shem and Ever learning. And I would like us to move to another perspective of a shepherd in Hebrew. O'e in Hebrew is a shepherd. Resh Ein He 2.75. But Baal Sulam says something very interesting about the word O'e, Resh Ein He. Once we change the letter Ein, which is 70, in the letter Aleph, which is one, we get a new word, Ro'e, the one who sees. Like the Bible speaks about the prophets as people who can see, Ro'e. They see the divinity. They see the divine speech being manifested wherever they walk. So, O'e, shepherd, is not just shepherd in the English meaning, but this is the one who can see all the different aspects or all these different parts of the puzzle or of the mosaic coming together as one picture or one speech. This is why Jacob is saying in Hebrew, Va'anochi ish chalak. And I am a smooth man or hairless man, unlike Esau, but not just in this manner of external appearance, as people think. The word chalak, chet lamed kof, 
can be read as chilek, chilek part, as the verse says, chilek eloha mimaal, part of the above divinity. So when Jacob says, v'anochi ish chalak, he doesn't mean that I'm a smooth man or hairless man, but he means I am a part of the upper divinity. Chalak also have the value of 138, as Fernando noticed yesterday. And we can read the 138 also as 318, the value of conversation. Because conversation smoothes things in life. When we walk and converse, it is easier to move because time is like a straight angle. There's a lot of conflicts in 90 degrees angle. 90 is the value of water in Hebrew and water marks time. So when we have conflicts or disagreements, it's like 90 degree angle. Like people go to a junction, two car are running into one junction, we might have not a pleasant moment, let's call it like this. But when we converse, we go with the curve. Conversia, with the curve that comes. And in this manner, we can cross many hard, tough moments because we are being related or we are relating to the one. And the one is always above time and space. When Jacob says, V'anochi ish chalak, and I'm a smooth man, he means, and I'm apart from the divinity above, and I am able to converse and to move in time. I'm not static. Because Esau sits in Mount Seir in the hairy mountain. Esau does not move. When people do not move, they become angry. All of those things are connected. Another aspect of V'anochi ish chalak, and I'm a smooth man, or I am a part of the divinity above, is the value. Value of 138 is like 318, like a conversation, or like the value of the term, the voice of Jacob. The voice of Jacob, kol Yaakov, kol Yaakov is 318. The hand of Esau, Yedei Esau, is 400. Check it and you will find it. Now, when Jacob says in Genesis 32, Im Lavan Garti, I dwell with Laban. This is not just historical reading of a fact that happened 4,000 years before our time. Im Lavan Garti, it means I lived with the light. Lavan, or in English Laban, is the Bible terminology for light because white holds all the other colors in itself. Now, the value of Lavan in Hebrew, Lamed Bet Nun, Lavan is 82. Lamed is 30, Bet is 2, 32, and Nun is 50, together is 82. Now, Lamed and Bet creating the word Lev, heart feelings, sentiments, and noon, final noon, symbolizes the sphere of Bina, understanding. So, whenever Jacob says, with Lavan Garti, I dwelled with Laban, he doesn't mean that he lived with his father-in-law, like people tend to think, but he lived with his heart, with the infinite understanding, with sentiments. Rashi said something interesting. He says the following, Gardi holds 
the value of 613, like the value of the good deeds that appear in the Bible. Taryag mitzvot, taf resh yod gimel, taf 400 resh, 200, 600, and yod gimel are 13. So, with Lavan Garti, I dwelled with a heart. I dwelled with infinite understanding. And the consequences, what is the consequence or the equation? Is that I see the good deeds or the great grace in life. When I dwell with the heart, when I dwell with infinite understanding, I can see all the structure of the Bible, 613, because Torah, Torah has the value of 611 plus 2 plus space and time. It is 613. And Jacob has this ability. This is why he says, with Lavan I dwelled. Im Lavan Garti, the upper white, the whiteness of the heart, the whiteness of the heart that has compassion for all colors. Now, another aspect of the name Jacob. The name Jacob, Yaakov, has the value of 182. When we look into the structure 1, 8, 2, we can write it as 1 multiple by 82. When 1 represents the divinity and 82 the value of Lavan. So every sentence that Jacob says is anchored in the numerical value of his name. This is why the Torah is also truth and we cannot change no word, not even letter or a comma. So with Lavan Gati is a reality. It's a fact. It's not historical detail. It is happening now when we open the Torah and read it. Im Lavan Gati. With the upper light I dwelled. And then he continues. Va'echar ad ata. And I'm delayed. This is the speech that Jacob ask his messengers to carry as a message for Esau. Va'echar ad ata. I dwelled with the upper light. But again, this is not historical reading of the text. So what does it mean? Va'echar ad ata. And I'm delayed until now. When a person lives with his heart, because we can ask what is the aim of us being born even to this life. Why Why do we come here and manifest it as human being? We could be abstract spirit. We are coming here to experience the life of a human heart on earth. And Jacob is corresponding with this aim, the aim of creation. So continuing his speech, im lavan gati, with the upper light, or with a heart that understands, I dwelled and I understood the meaning of divinity. Va'echar ad ata, and I'm delayed. If a person lives with divinity, why is he delaying? Person who lives with divinity is delaying in a relation to people who do not live with divinity. Because while the time person dedicates his life for divinity, people already being busy in the horizontal axis and they manage to capture a lot, a lot of what 
The horizontal axis offers in life. This is why Jacob says, Im Lavan Garti, with Lavan I dwelt with the upper light, with infinite love and understanding, and I'm delayed. Also, there's another perspective, and this comes from David in his Psalms 1 39 5. David says, Aho Vakedim Tsartani, you created first the back end of me, Vatashet Alai Kapecha. You created the back end of me, meaning first the night aspect of me, first the vessel, which is called Aho. Aho is the back end. There's always evening before there's a morning, like in Genesis 1. First we have a vessel, the darkness, and then we have the light, the morning, or the recognition. The night always proceeding the day. This is why David says, Aho vakedim. Aho is the back end or the black night, and kedim is not just east geographically, but kedim has the value of 144, like Adam or truth. So, Aho vakedim, night and day or vessel, or flesh, and then spirit, you created me, and you laid your hand upon me, that I will not know that I am a spirit. Because in the first part of our lives, we think that we are bodies moving somewhere, living like everybody else, because this is all systems and institutions are telling us, this is our body, those are my parents, and so this is my neighborhood, my country, and so, so. Aho vakedem, first we come to term with the physical or the material aspect of our lives, and then we move into the direction of human being. And all of this process is hidden from us for a reason. This is why David says, Vatashet alai kapecha, you have put your hand on me or over me or above me, that I will not be aware of this process. Why? Because Calf, a hand or a palm, has the value of 100. 100 is 10 double 10 or 10 in the power of 2. The sages are saying that Adam Harishon was a divine creature. He's supposed to live 1,000 years. 1,000 is 10 in the power of 3. 10 in 3 dimensions. Ten, double ten, double ten. Ten in the power of three is one thousand. But after he ate from the tree of knowledge and was puffed with self-importance, his spiritual height became one hundred cubits. Mea ama. Mea ama. 100 cubits. So the spiritual height of Adam minimized from 1,000, from 10 in the power of 3, which we can read also as love, 10 plus 3, we can read it as love, or 10 double 3, which is Lamed. This is the only letter which is higher then the line of writing and aims at infinite learning with divinity. This is also can be the case. So the spiritual height of Adam is minimized from the ability for infinite love 
10 in the power of 3, or 10 plus 3, 13 and 1 in love, to 10 in the power of 2. 10 in the power of 2 is the 1. 10 plus 2 is the 1 who lives only in time and space, like in 12 12 months, but doesn't see the spectrum that holds the 12 months. She is 13 in love, doesn't see the ring of fire. So this is what David is saying. First you created my vessel, my body, but also you created my inner dimension. Because Kedem is not just east, where the sun is shining from, but also is where the soul is coming. So Aho, first the vessel, then the light, the inner light, but you put your hand above me. You diminish in a way my spiritual height or I experience my height is two-dimensional because your intention is first that I will sense and I will grow gradually and in this way I can correct the mistake of Adam Arishon. Another dimension of Jacob's name, because I promised to speak about Jacob today, is the value of his name, 182. When we divide 182 into 2, because God is always in the middle, we get 91. 91 is the value of Malach in Hebrew, which is angel or a messenger. 91 is also the value of the days of one season in the year. Each season has 91 days. So we have 4 times 91. This is 364 plus the 1. We have 365 days. So, so Jacob, which has the value of 182, also holds in his name angels. And if we pay attention to the biblical story, we find around Jacob angels. He dreams about angels, the dream of the letter. He sends angels or messengers to his brother Esau. When he comes from his father-in-law country, angels are receiving him. The book of Zohar says those are the spirits of Abraham and Isaac, his forefathers. And when he blesses Joseph's children in Egypt, he says, the angel who blessed me, Hamalach, please pay attention that around Jacob, there's a universe of angels because the meaning of his name, the abstract meaning of his name is angels. Please remember that this is why upon the ark we have the Keruvim, or in English Cherubim, the Keruvim, the two babies, the innocent babies above the holy ark. This is why the Lord is saying that whenever a child is born, two angels are escorting him because every child which is born now is Jacob, seven times, 26, seven times of being. He is born into time and space, to seven days of creation. Please pay attention to all of these laws and put all of them together as one perspective. This was unusual conversation because this is what divinity brings today. I would like to wish all of you Shabbat Shalom and wonderful life. Later on. Thank you for listening to Bible Stories as Blueprints of the Soul, your Biblical Hebrew podcast. For more information, articles, videos, and interactive classes, please visit hebrew.learnoutlive.com or join our YouTube channel. Shalom v'chol tu. Thank you.